Brave is one of our favorite films, and Merida is one of our favorite Disney princesses. But did you know just what might have influenced the movie? Stay tuned to the end when we'll tell you about what life was really like in medieval Scotland. If this is your first time visiting The Things, then give this video a like and hit the subscribe button. Today, we are going to tell you the disturbing real story behind Disney's Brave. Bears Something that plays a big part in Brave is the character of Mordu, a dangerous and demonic bear. But were you wondering if there ever were bears in Scotland? Well, the answer to that question is yes. Scotland was home to bears quite possibly up until around the 11th century AD, which is a little after the story of Brave is set. The existence of Scottish bears is something that the Roman poet Marshall wrote about in the year 80 AD. He told of how a Caledonian, the Latin word for Scottish, bear was brought to Rome to take place in the games there. And legend has it that in 1050, a member of the clan Gordon was ordered to put three bears' heads on his coat of arms because he had killed one. However, it has been argued that that is the result of an incorrect translation, and it should be boars' heads. But anyway, the only place in Scotland where you'll see bears right now is in one of the country's zoos. However, that could all change. Scottish landowner Paul Lister has announced plans to reintroduce wild brown bears to his 23,000 square foot estate in the country of Sutherland. So while his plans are still very much a work in progress, bears could be another once extinct species of animal reintroduced to the British Isles. Tartan one thing that you can't help but notice in Brave is the sheer amount of tartan on display. This checkered plaid pattern is associated with Scotland and Scottish clans. In fact, every clan has its own tartan. That's true to the extent that Disney ended up filling the design of the clan Dunbrock tartan with the Scottish government's Scottish Register of Tartans. However, a lot of the official tartans are relatively recent. When King George IV visited Edinburgh in 1822, he was the first reigning British monarch to visit Scotland since Charles II. 150 years earlier. So his visit was a big thing, and the event was organized by the renowned author Sir Walter Scott. Now Sir Walter had become famous for his romantic literature about the Scottish Highlands, and decided to create a pageant involving pipers and a lot of tartan. But here's the thing, the traditional tartans had more or less died out by then, so new ones had to be created. This is why many of the tartans that are seen today in pageants actually date from less than 200 years ago. Incidentally, people who do not belong to an ancient ancient Scottish clan are allowed to wear a tartan, on one condition. If they are a subject of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, it is custom that they are allowed to wear the Royal Stuart Tartan, which was, of course, created by Sir Walter Scott. Medieval Scottish Royal Women when Disney and Pixar created Brave, they introduced us to a new member of the pantheon of Disney princesses. That was Merida, the feisty redhead bow and arrow shooting princess who the movie is all about. However, while Merida's story is ultimately a happy one, that wasn't the case for all medieval Scottish royal women. One sad story is that of Queen Margaret, also known as the Maid of Norway. Margaret was the granddaughter of King Alexander III of Scotland, and the daughter of his daughter Margaret, who was married to King Eric II of Norway. However, the older Margaret died in childbirth, and with all Alexander's children also having died, the baby Margaret was heir to the Scottish throne. However, Alex remarried, and his new wife was pregnant with an heir when tragedy struck. The king's horse fell off a cliff in a storm, killing him, and sadly, his widow miscarried, meaning that Margaret, who was just three years old, became queen. And in 1290, on her way to Scotland, she died, aged just seven, leaving Scotland facing civil war. Another famous Scottish royal woman from that time was Gruach. Not heard of her? Well, she was married to Scotland's King Macbeth, making her the real version of the villainous Lady Macbeth from Shakespeare's play. However, the real Macbeth was a devout and good king, and we don't think his wife, the granddaughter of Kenneth III of Scotland, was really anything as bad as the fictional version. Tough Scottish Women Although some of the royal Scottish women of the Middle Ages were somewhat hard done by, people looking for a real-life model for Merida have some pretty good examples to choose from the ranks of Scotland's nobility. One of our favorite stories is that of Agnes, Countess of Dunbar. In 1388, Scotland and England were at war, which was pretty common throughout a lot of the Middle Ages, and they laid siege to Dunbar Castle. While her husband was away fighting, Agnes was left in charge of the servants and a small number of guards. While the attacking army was expected to take 
take the castle pretty quickly, Agnes held out. Every day, she and her servants would walk the ramparts and dust down the damaged stonework. But that wasn't all they did. They dropped boulders lobbed into the castle on the attacker's battering ram, and they held strong for five months until King Edward III of England ordered the siege to end. There was also Euphemia, Countess of Ross. She was twice widowed, and when she asked Alexander Mackenzie to become her third husband and he rejected her, she had him thrown into prison. Quite clearly, not a woman to be messed around with then. So we think that those are things that could potentially have served as a bit of an inspiration for Brave. Medieval Scottish Life when you're watching Brave, it might look like living in medieval Scotland is a fun thing. However, the reality of the situation is that it wasn't. Even if you were wealthy, things weren't all that good. There was a low life expectancy, and many women died while giving birth. And if you were poor, then things were even worse. For instance, a typical meal for a peasant would be bread, porridge, and oat cakes. If you were lucky, you might be able to eat some mutton. Things were, admittedly, a lot better if you were royal or noble. It wasn't uncommon to see meats such as swan or sea at a big feast. That said, one of the interesting things about Brave is the way it isn't entirely historically accurate. Although it is set in the 10th century, people are seen wearing corsets, which weren't invented until the 15th century. But what's worth pointing out is that the story is an original, and it is inspired by many things, ranging from writer Brenda Chapman's relationship with her daughter, as well as the fairy tales of Hans Christian Andersen in The Brothers Grimm. So maybe we shouldn't be too harsh about the historical accuracy of the movie. But what do you you think about Brave? Did you like it? What were the bits that you liked best? And what would you change about it? Don't be shy, tell us in the comments. And that's all for the disturbing real story behind Disney's Brave. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.